Welcome to MEB. This is episode 4, Dimensions, Units, and Unit Conversions. As you're probably aware, engineering involves plenty of calculations. These calculations involve quantities, which consists of two parts, a numerical value and a unit. In everyday life, we understand the meaning of many quantities by numerical value only. If someone asks how old you are, you might reply 20, with a unit of years being implied. In engineering, however, it is essential to recognize that a quantity is meaningless without both the value and the unit. Certain units make sense in certain contexts, but other units make sense in others. And it's always better to be clear. For example, you'd probably want to measure the diameter of a pipe in inches as opposed to miles, or the height of a storage tank in meters as opposed to millimeters. To me, a strong understanding of units is vitally important for a few reasons. First and foremost, the consequences of a misunderstanding in units can be catastrophic. Suppose that a chemical engineer performed an energy balance and concluded that a reactor should be supplied with 2,000 watts of heat in order to function properly. But instead of watts, the operator supplied 2,000 kilowatts. This would likely lead to a runaway chemical reaction and an explosion. A second reason to care about units as a student is to check your work. For example, if you are tasked with calculating the mass of a chemical going into a process unit and your answer ends up being in meters per second, this should be an indication that you've probably done something wrong. Don't laugh this off. This happens much more often than you think. Dimensions. A dimension is a type of measurement. Dimensions can be categorized into base dimensions and derived dimensions. Base dimensions, as it sounds like, are basic. They cannot be broken down any further. In chemical engineering, there are five base dimensions that we care about. Mass, length, time, temperature, and moles. Derived dimensions come about by combining the base dimensions. For example, volume is length cubed. Velocity is length divided by time. Force is mass times length divided by time squared. I highly recommend becoming proficient in breaking derived dimensions into base dimensions if you aren't already. Here are some for you to try. I'll put the answers down in the description so that you can check your thinking. Units. Units are arbitrary, but agreed upon conventions that quantify a dimension. For example, the meter, mile, micron, and foot are all units that measure the dimension of length. Engineers love to perform calculations in the SI unit system, but for some awful and unknown reason, the United States refuses to adopt it officially, and we still base our society around the U.S. customary unit system, which was derived from the old English unit system. Unfortunately for us, that means we have to be conversant and proficient with both unit systems. Generally speaking, the SI unit system is just easier to understand and very logically consistent. One of the most confusing parts about the U.S. customary system is that the word pound can refer to both a unit of mass or a unit of force, and sometimes you have to use context clues to figure out which. In this class, I will try to always specify pound mass, symbol LB sub M, or pound force, symbol LB sub F, and I suggest you do the same to stay organized. Even more confusing still, the pound force is defined at a value of 32.174 pound mass, feet per second squared. Coincidentally, the acceleration due to gravity has the same numerical value of 32.174, but different units of feet per second squared. To understand why this matters, consider stepping on a scale. This machine is literally measuring your weight, the force that gravity exerts on you. You learned in physics class that weight is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. However, the unit of this measurement is pound mass, feet per second squared. To convert it into a force, we have to divide by the conversion factor. Don't worry if this step is confusing to you, we're going to come back to this later. So this system isn't completely silly. The number on the scale is both the force and pound force, and your mass and pound mass. In contrast, the SI unit for force, the Newton, is defined to equal 1 kilogram meter per second squared. There's no unit conversion needed here, which I find much more intuitive and easier to understand. Another great feature of the SI unit system are the prefixes, which can quickly convert scales by factors of 10. For example, the prefix kilo means 10 to the third, or 1,000. One kilometer equals 1,000 meters. In contrast, the analogous conversion in U.S. customary is one mile equals 5,280 feet. 
Who decided upon that number? I have no idea, but I really hope that there is a good reason for it, because I am very annoyed that this is something that I have to memorize. The Three Commandments of Units When it comes to units, there are three commandments that you should always keep in mind. The First Commandment Quantities shall not be added or subtracted unless their units are equal, and, by extension, their dimensions as well. This one might sound obvious when I directly state it. Of course, you can't add 6 feet to 12 miles, or subtract 25 seconds from 2 hours. But again, don't laugh. This is an easy mistake to make when you aren't focusing on it and keeping careful track of your units. If you do have to add or subtract quantities with different units, you must convert units so that they match. More on this in a moment. The second commandment. When quantities are multiplied or divided, their units shall be multiplied or divided as well. For example, this is how we can calculate a velocity given a length and a time. If Michigan running back Donovan Edwards ran 75 yards in 10 seconds, then his average velocity was 7.5 yards per second. This commandment also comes in handy when canceling units. For example, if I knew the volume of a quantity of water and its density, which has units of mass per volume, Multiplying them together would cause the volume unit to cancel, and result in just the mass. The third commandment. Units of a quantity may be converted by multiplying it by a conversion factor. A conversion factor is, essentially, a fraction in which the numerator and the denominator represent the same quantity but in different units. Technically, this is the same as multiplying by 1, which is always mathematically permissible. Going back to Donovan Edwards, his velocity can be converted into miles per hour by noting that there are 1,760 yards in one mile and 3,600 seconds in one hour. Performing the conversion results in 15.3 miles per hour. When you convert units, make sure that you are doing it properly by canceling them out as you go. As a chemical engineer, of course, the internet will likely always be at your fingertips. However, there are a few unit conversions that are so important that you should know them by heart. Some examples include the units of pressure. One atmosphere is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury, or 101,325 pascals, or 14.7 psi. Check the description below and I'll include some more essential conversions that all chemical engineers should know by heart. Episode 4's Learning Objectives now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Explain the differences between base dimensions and derived dimensions, and break a derived dimension down into its base dimensions. 2. Be able to convert units of a given dimension into different units of the same dimension if you're given conversion factors. 3. Be able to recite from memory the conversion factors listed below in the description box. That will conclude this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.